So I'm sure we all know what's wrong with this picture. Correct, it's the wood. I mean, wood in a metal lathe? My god, that's just scandalous, isn't it? Okay, maybe a bit extreme, but wood in a metal lathe, generally not something that you'd want to do. Not that it's going to destroy the lathe or anything, because I've done it before, and as long as you clean the lathe up properly after using it, it works fine, I guess. And by fine, I mean you'll probably make the worst woodworking in the history of the world, but generally, it'll be usable. And the reason for that is twofold. The chucks just aren't really designed for holding wood, they bite in and leave pretty bad marks from where the jaws were. And it also doesn't help that, the way that a normal lathe works with hand wheels, it isn't really conducive to making long sweeping arcs like you want to do with most woodworking projects. I mean you can try, but the results generally aren't going to be as good compared to using a proper, you know, wood turning setup. As a result, you usually have to resort to using rasps and files, and it's nowhere as fast as using a proper turning tool, and the rasps tend to get clogged up with wood. At this point, I should give a bit of context for this video, because the thing is, normally I don't really do much woodworking on this channel. If I did, I'd probably have bought a wood lathe a long time ago. But the reality is, every now and then, I do need to do a bit of wood turning, and I have a metal lathe, so I might as well use it. In fact, I was 95% of the way done with a proper metalworking project, which I was going to upload this week, but as it turned out, I needed a bit of woodworking done, and, well, here we are. And I probably would have done it the same way that I've done every other woodworking project involving the lathe, which would have just been to rasp it and file it into shape. Except for the fact that I have a few more woodworking projects that I want to do at home, and one of the things that I need is a woodworking lathe. And instead of buying a wood lathe, I'm simply going to convert this one on a budget, obviously. So it's currently just before 3pm on a Saturday afternoon, and if everything goes well, I should be able to get this done by the time I go home. Well, that's the plan anyway. So the first thing that I want to do is replace the lathe chuck. For one, I obviously don't want it biting into the wood and ruining the finish, but the main reason why I want to replace it are those jaws on the chuck. I'm just a bit uneasy about using a hand tool and accidentally bumping or colliding with the lathe chuck jaws and obviously it would bite and probably rip the tool out of my hand or do some damage of some type. I don't know how warranted the fear is but it does make me a bit uncomfortable. So instead I'll simply make one of those spur centers. If I was going to do a lot of woodworking, I'd probably buy one, because they're not that expensive. But since I'll only use mine probably a few times a year, it makes a lot more sense for me to make it. Now the piece that I'll use is a piece of 25mm off-cut steel. It's a little bit shorter than I'd want to use, but it should work. I'll first get the end cut off and cleaned up. So the first thing I'll do is I'll turn down a shank on the back end. Generally you'd find these with a Morse taper on the end, but I'm going to hold this in an ER collet, so this will have an 18mm shank. Now before I flip it, I'm going to drill a hole all the way through. This will be to help machine it, and it's also going to be to add a centre at the very end. I'll also point out that the design that I'm using is a mix of Joe Pizinski's design and Holtz Michael's design. Two really good designs which I'll link in the video description. With the hole now reamed to size, I'll now remove it and the three jaw chuck. Now the rest of the machining will be done using the collet chuck and when I'm using it, I'll also use the collet chuck. Unlike the three jaw, there's nothing for me to catch the tool on.
With the tool now cleaned up, we now need to machine in the front spurs. This is what will lock and drive the wood. Now what I'm looking to machine are four sharp peaks that can drive into the back of a piece of wood and turn it on the lathe. I think the challenge here is to make them sharp and pointy so they don't split the wood, so they go in and bite properly, but not to make them too thin so that they break when you try to machine it or when you drive it in the first time. And this is 1020 steel that I'm using, so whilst it is pretty tough metal, it's not the toughest form of steel in the world and I'm not going to be hardening it. And after enough patience and machining, we're left with something that looks sort of woodworking. I don't know, we'll figure out if it works. First things first though, we need to make a center. Now because I reamed it slightly undersized, I can use some silver steel as a center and I can press fit it into position. Before I do that though, I need to get it in the collet chuck and machine the center. Alright, let's test it out. Unfortunately, it didn't end up going too well. The wood split and I think that's mainly down to the center being a little bit too far up. I also managed to drop it, which ensured that if it did work, it would no longer work. Now thankfully, fixing them was pretty straightforward. I simply took it to the lathe and just removed about 2mm off the front. This revealed some flats which I simply just filed down into a sharp point. The centre's also been cut down and it's recessed a lot further than it was before. It now works a lot better than it did before. It hammers in easily and it sticks into the back of the dowel. So with the driving issue now done, let's now focus on the tool rest. So if you own a metal lathe, I'm pretty sure you're going to be familiar with the method of simply putting in a square piece of metal and using that as a tool rest. I've certainly done it before and the results are pretty mixed. I mean to some extent, yes it does work, but there is a fair amount of leverage at the far end of the tool rest and there's a fair amount of flex once you start doing heavier cuts. And the angles that you can get in with the tool are pretty limited with the tool post in the way. In a pinch, yes it does work, but for proper woodworking, you don't really want to stick with this method. What I'd much rather is a proper T-rest like you'd see on a normal woodworking lathe. Now obviously I could make one of those, but I think a much smarter and quicker approach is to simply make use of the T-slots on the cross slide of the lathe. What I have here is the stand of the vise that I made at the end of last year. All it is is a piece of steel plate with some holes drilled in it and a piece of round bar welded in. And whilst it works really well as the stand for the vise, it's also going to work really well as the basis for a tool rest on the metal lathe. The reason for that is A, it already exists so I don't need to make it. B, I can rotate a piece of round bar in the centre of it. And see, those two holes line up perfectly with the T-slots on the cross slide. I mean, if you didn't know any better, you'd say I was planning this all the way from the start. I mean, I wasn't, but let's just pretend that I was. So with the base already made, all I really need to do is cut up some lengths of rod. I can then get them in the vise and then weld it up.
All right, and that's our tool rest ready to go. We can rotate it, we got height adjustments, and we can push it in and out. Not as fancy as the proper one, but it'll get the job done. Say what you want, but it's already looking like a proper wood turning setup. So the final thing left to do is to make some wood turning tools. Now initially, my first thought was to simply modify a regular chisel. I mean, it looks very similar to a skew chisel and I could probably just modify it and add a new bevel on the other side and it would work just fine enough. I mean, just as a regular chisel, it did seem to work. Unfortunately, I don't think the tang was long enough or really the right shape to get this thing to properly work. It was just a little bit too short. I also wanted some sort of large roughing gouge for taking away large amounts of material and I wouldn't be able to make that from a chisel. Eventually I found some material which I think should work. For the gouge I'll be using this piece of linear rail which I have kicking around. I'm not exactly sure what it's made from but I know it's hardened steel of some alloy and that'll work fine for turning wood. And for the skew chisel I'm going to be using this old broken file. It's roughly the right shape, it's hardened so it should work. All I really need to do is remove the teeth from the file and then grind it into the rough shape that I need. The tang is also pretty long but I probably want to make it just a little bit longer for a tool like this. So let's make the gouge first. Now the rods are threaded at each end and for a tool like this, this should benefit us. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut down through the centre and then remove one side. I'll then take it to the belt sander, clean it up, and then add some clearance on the bottom side. Not really what I was expecting, but let's just see if it works. And unfortunately, no, that isn't working. Thankfully, it should be easy to fix. I'll simply use the grinder to enlarge the radius on the inside of the cutter, and that should hopefully make the outside edges a little bit sharper and cut a lot better. Still a bit ugly, but let's see if it works. and that is cutting so much better than it was before. I'm not sure how a normal gouge would be cutting, but that is removing so much more material than I thought it would. So with that now done, let's start to make the skew chisel. And the first thing that I need to do is remove the teeth. Now because the file is hardened, if I wanted to remove the teeth using the milling machine, I'd probably have to anneal the piece of steel first, remove the teeth with the milling machine and then re-harden it before making the chisel edge on the skew chisel. Probably not impossible, but because I don't know the exact composition of the steel that I'm working with, I probably wouldn't be able to heat treat it to the same hardness as the steel is heat treated to at the moment. So instead what I'll do is I'll use an 80 grit belt to remove the teeth from the file. And as long as I keep the piece of steel cool enough, I hopefully shouldn't lose any hardness from the steel. And with the teeth now pretty much now mostly removed, we can now start to form the cutting edge. And that's effectively just going to be a bevel on each side of the blade, which comes to a point in the centre. And on first impressions, I am really happy with the cutting of that tool. I think the tool rest might be a little bit too high in retrospect, but apart from that, I'm really happy with how it's cutting. I now use the grinder to make the tang a little bit longer. So 
So the final thing left to do is make some handles for these tools. And I think it's pretty fitting that we'll use these tools to make their own handles. Now the good thing about this being based on a metal lathe is I was able to use the rear parting tool post to turn down the step down for the ferrule which I'll attach at the end. The rest of the turning I'll do by hand until I get a shape that I'm roughly happy with. And I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty nice. And it looks so much better once I add the oil. Final thing left to do is tap the chisel in. And it was going so well until the wood split. Man, that is annoying, but I think that's my fault for not drilling a large enough hole. So with the first handle and chisel now done, let's now make the second. And there you have it, in the span of how many hours it was, minus dinner with the family, I was able to get a proper wood turning setup made for the metal lathe. Say what you want, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I know it's not a proper setup, and if you wanted to do a lot of wood turning, you want a bit more of a permanent setup than this. But for the small amount of wood turning that I'll be doing, this is more than enough. I'm really happy with the spur and the skew chisel, but I think I could probably practice a bit more with the grinding for the gouge. So with all this now done, I can hopefully finish the next project. So I guess until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.